The theory, are you rolling? Yeah. Okay, so statistics theory, what are the, the goals? What, what's the point of making all these complicated statistics that we have in our sports leagues? Like why are we choosing to make the statistics? So we're trying to describe what happens in the games, yes. So we're, we're counting each point that someone scores, each home run that someone hits, we're gonna be counting. But the idea of a value stat or a rate stat is to say how efficiently someone is performing, how valuable they are to the team, how much better than the average player in a league. It, you know, it gets really complicated, and this applies to every major sports league. So I'm just completely rambling. I'm, I'm not going to use any of this. These niggas take me for granted. What would happen if I finish? Better hunted, they panic. My shooters only speak Spanish. Do you want to cut it or keep going? No, no, just keep going. So. I'm. I'm so mad. I'm so mad. I'm incredibly frustrated. I'm, I'm fuming. Like, I'm so upset. I just looked up passer rating for, for quarterbacks in the NFL. I didn't want to know what, what the details of it were for so long because it seems so dubious because everyone is like 130 and 70. It seemed like a really bad stat to me just based on seeing its applications. But I finally caved in and I looked it up. So just let me, let me show you. What makes a quarterback good? What does a successful NFL quarterback do? They, they complete all their passes. They don't miss. They score a bunch of touchdowns. They keep the drive going. They don't throw interceptions. That's all the kinds of things that you want to get done when you're quarterback. So passer rating is divided up into four categories. This is the calculation for passer rating. These are the numbers that go into that stat. So A, B, C, and D. And that's minus 0.3. All right, so we have four components of a good quarterback. The completion percentage, the yards per attempt, so how often they complete their passes and how far those passes go for, the rate at which they score touchdowns and the rate at which they throw interceptions. So we have these like really complicated uh, fucking, fucking numbers. So obviously if you wanted to look at the, the performance of a quarterback, you could take those and look at the four stats, but the idea, the, the theory behind this is you wanna combine that all into one stat so we can directly compare the different quarterbacks. So what we do is we take completion percentage minus 0.3 times five. There's no fucking reason for there to be a 0.3 and a five in there. We're just saying that that's how valuable to the statistic that this quarter of it is worth. The next quarter is minus three times 0.25. God knows why. The next one is touchdown per attempt times 20. Okay, sure. And now we have 2.375. Who came up with that fucking, that's not like, do you just see 2.375 flying around in the NFL arena? What, what? And then interceptions times 25, because apparently this is 25 as valuable. So it actually makes sense uh, to get constants that give you a certain value to the different events. You, you can make a constant, but the problem is all of these constants are sure, they're, they're describing how valuable the components are. But then we put all those components into A plus B plus C plus D, the four components, over six times 100. The point of the over six, the times 100 here is to get the stat to look like a pretty good quarterback's 100. A really good quarterback is like 120, like over 100, and under 100 is like a not great one. That's the whole idea of, of getting it there. But this is the most really stupid, this is the stupidest part of the statistic right here. So if any of these numbers exceeds 2.375, it sets it back to 2.375. So if you complete 100% of your passes, this value A would be 3.5, but the limit sets it all the way back to 2.375. So in passer rating, there is no difference between a quarterback who completes every pass and a quarterback who completes 77.5% of his passes. That's the limit. So any quarterback above there is seen equal in completion percentage. The same goes for touchdown rate. A quarterback could throw a touchdown every pass and passer rating doesn't give a flying fuck. Do you understand? Like if you, imagine if you had a, a quarterback who threw a touchdown every time, the, the passer rating stat would have him the exact same as a quarterback who threw a touchdown. Fuck, um, how, what's the, there's a number here. Every 8.42. <laughs> 
8.421 attempts. The, <laughs> according, according to passer rating, the, you're a great, you're, you're a maximum quarterback if you average one touchdown every 8.421 attempts. Yeah, 8.4, yep. I, obviously, if you, if you watch an NFL game, you know that we're looking for that stat. If that quarterback has a, a touchdown every 8.421 attempts, like every, every fan knows that, right? Like 8.42, yeah, obviously. Every, it, the, the interception percentage, no, okay, yeah, if you have a 9.5 interception percentage or lower, you're just equal. So the, the result of this is you can have several quarterbacks who have a maximum passer rating. So all you have to do is meet those minimums. So you only have to have uh, a 77.5% completion percentage and that one touchdown every 8.421 attempts. If you meet or exceed those requirements, you have a maximum passer rating. But, but here's, here's the funny thing, okay? That maximum, that, that number that describes a quarterback who meets those, who, who, who's, who's played really well, that maximum, ready? What do you think that maximum is? Cause, cause like, what's the, the best batting average you can have? It's a thousand. What, what's the, what's the best percentage you can have? It's a hundred percent. So what do you think the, the, the peak, the, the best quarterback, if you, if you reach the maximum, if you've played this well, what do you think that number would be? What, 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 yeah. It, one, five, eight, point, eight, eight, point three a very aesthetically pleasing number. If you are a really good quarterback, you gotta have a 158.3 pass rate. Are you kidding me? What, what are we doing here? What is the point of passer rating? Why are we trying to hit 158.3? What, why? The, there, there's no reason to, to limit these numbers to, to put these arbitrary limits that you set them back. There's no reason for these to all be valued the same too. Because if you perform exceptionally well in only one of these, you'll have a weird passer rating because if you're shitty in all the other ones or if you're really good, like, there's, there's no reason that this applies to how good a quarterback is performing. For instance, if you have a quarterback who's completing 10 yard, eight, nine or 10 yard passes, but he's completing them 100% of the time, that quarterback won't have a maximum passer rating. But think about that. If you're completing every pass for eight or nine yards, every time you throw it for a whole game, you're gonna win. You're gonna get a first down every time. That's good. That's as good a quarterback as you can be. But because for some reason, the yards per attempt has to be 12.5, you're not gonna have a maximum passer rating. That limit is not gonna be able to be reached. Even if you are a dominant quarterback, there's a lot, there's so many ways that a passer rating is limited. The NCAA passer rating has an upper limit of 1,261.6 and a lower limit of negative 731.6. Passer rating is a completely different formula for the NCAA. They're not even, so that's basically telling me that they're not even playing the same sport the college football and, and NFL, what is, what? When you have a, a sport, say, say like, you know, baseball, we are playing the same game, whether we're in the major leagues or the minor leagues or, or little league, you still have singles and walks and, and all the components that make up a baseball game where you score runs. But you're telling me that a quarterback in the NCAA is held to a standard that's completely different than a quarter. What is the point of that? So if you have a really good passer rating in the NCAA compared to the other players in the league, you might be worse than them if you were just to have the exact same performance in the NFL. But why? 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 For what reason? Okay, I want to. I want to talk about baseball. I want to cover good statistics because because I'm so, I'm just so angry. I'm profusely furious. Does that make sense? What what adjective I, I cannot I do not have the vocabulary to describe 
the ire within me due to passer rating. Oh, the, if I'm in the NCAA, I'm definitely gonna have a 1,000 passer rating. But if you're in the NFL, it can only be 158.3. Cause that, yeah, that's reasonable. 158.3, pretty good number. Everyone knows that 158.3 means that you're a good quarterback, right? That doesn't make sense. Um, baseball. Baseball. So I want to tell you about a stat called WRC+. Plus. Woo! Baseball. The point of baseball is to score more runs than your, the other team. All of value for a player can be calculated by how much they add to your team's run scoring and run prevention. So if you're a pitcher, the rate at which you prevent the other team from scoring runs is the number one thing that's important to how well you performed. The most descriptive statistic of a pitcher's performance over a given period is his earned run average. That is the best way to describe how much he helped his team win games. However, that is not the best statistic to describe how well he will perform in the future because there's a lot of luck and sequencing that goes into that statistic. So I'm talking about predictive statistics that look into the future. WRC plus is an attempt to combine all the aspects of hitting, not fielding or, or base running or pitching or anything like that. This is just for hitters. So this statistic is based on just runs created. And then the W means weighted runs created is the RC. And the plus is something I'll get to later. So this is sort of similar to passer rating. The, the passer rating statistic when there was like 20 and then minus 0.3 and then the, the percentage and you were taking these constants. So something similar happens for runs created. Batting average is a really basic baseball stat. That's hits divided by at bats. Slugging percentage. That's another, it's a little bit of a better statistic because it's gonna weight the better outcome. So a, a double or a home run are worth more. The extra base hits that you generate are worth more towards your slugging because in batting average, they're just go all in as hits. So slugging percentage is total bases divided by at bats. So total bases meaning if you hit a home run, it's four. But actually runs created is this better statistic because it calculates for the fact that a home run isn't just worth four times a single. It's not that simple because in order to create runs for your team, a home run makes it a lot more likely that you're gonna score. If there's a man on first and you hit a single, you might not get runs in the inning. If there's a man on first and you hit a home run, you're definitely getting runs in the inning because they automatically score. So runs created is an endeavor to say over the whole season, this player uh, was able to contribute to our team. It's not a count of how many runs they made. That, that's not, it's not RBIs or anything. It's a rate at which they were able to generate outcomes in their baseball game that were beneficial to their team's chances of scoring runs. I know I'm probably gonna have to speed this all up because I'm using so many fucking words to describe something that's actually pretty simple. Sorry, we're moving on now. So the different constants that go into how much the home run single, the walk, the walk is also something that's very important. That's not calculated in batting average. Obviously that's gonna be on base percentage, hits, walks. Uh, hit by pitches over uh, plate appearances, which is inclusive of sacrifices, that's something. You, you, all, you all understand. Everybody knows that. You know, yeah. <coughs> I've been in this club too long. The woman that I would try. You're rolling this, right? Yeah. <laughs> what was I talking about? Um, Weighted the W in WRZ Plus? All right, let's talk about it. If you hit 70 home runs, but it's 2001, that's worth a little bit less than if you hit 70 home runs in 1960. The numbers are not the exact same for a hitter who performs the same exact way in different years because the value to your team of having that performance is relative to how the rest of the league is creating value. For each year, it'll be a little constant. So like maybe for 2019, it was 0 0.9. Uh, two years ago, it was 0.91, like that kind of, it, it's small, but that's why the W's there. And then finally, we're getting to the plus. It's the same idea as what passer rating was doing. A plus B plus C plus D over six times 100. So they wanted to get it so that uh, it was more aesthetically pleasing to say, this guy is 100 good, this guy's 80 good, this guy's 120 good. But they completely fucked it up because they, they ended up having the maximum be 158.3. What? what? 
you could have just not done that. You could do what baseball does with this plus and take the, the value that you're creating. Obviously, football does it all wrong because they say, oh, there, there should be a limit on. The, 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 if 25 is the average, we're going to set that to 100. And if somebody else has 26, we're going to set that to, you know, it, it's scaled so that the, the average is 100. So if you are 20% better than average, your WRC plus will be 120. A better statistic to describe offensive performance than on-base percentage or batting average or slugging or OPS, which is just a combination of on-base and slugging. That's what OPS is. Those are good. OPS is way better than batting average. Batting average means almost nothing. You can be a 300 hitter and you can have a 70 WRC plus. You can be a 250 hitter and you can have a 170 WRC plus. So, you know, your, your MVP player, like the Bryce Harper or someone like that, in his MVP year, his WRC plus was 198 in 2015. That means he was 98% better than the average hitter. Jeff Mathis has like a five WRC plus. That means he is 95% worse than the league average hitter. That it's very simple. Passer rating is looking to accomplish a similar thing, except 100 just means that, that you fulfilled all those weird A, B, C, Ds. Yeah, you can compare the passer rating, but also, as I explained, that there's a lot of leeway for passer rating to not be fully descriptive of how good a quarterback is. Baseball statistics do it all better. Like, like when I say baseball's better, I, I'm, like, I'm serious.